uh, thank you very much for organizing this event in the first place and uh, for the opportunity to share with you my ideas or experiences. So let me prepare the um, my, my PowerPoint now. Uh, so I hope we can all see uh, ourselves and the PowerPoint, right? Okay, so um, I will I will try to you know find the balance of what teacher does, what students do in these slides. And everything started, of course, in March uh, this year, as we suddenly found ourselves in new waters because of the new situation, we had to move completely online. So we are all in this together. So what did the teachers do? They tried to get their best ways how to teach. They try to use the tools um, as they knew it. And students, of course, they had to adopt to different approaches, to different environments, different tools that various teachers used. So after uh, three months of teaching online, our faculty did a quick survey and the students were asked how they feel about this online learning. So um, you see this, this results of the queries. So live lectures, of course, live communications. This was the most important part of the online learning and they found most um, um, this kind of communication most useful. Of course, recorded lectures were great because they could uh, listen to those recordings, hear those video clips again and again. But what was not really um, appreciated were materials without any activities, so just passive mat materials. And um, about uh, working loads, most of them felt that the workload increased uh, and they were not really happy about that. So um, here are some pros and cons that they they put on this uh, in this questionnaire. So, Students uh, believed mostly that it's quite easy, uh, very convenient to participate in those lectures. There is uh, the time is used more efficiently because you don't have to um, go out of the house, spend hours um, for the transportations. It's cheaper to stay at home and so on. And of course, there were some cons like technical problems. The Internet was not stable as well. The higher workload, as we saw on the previous slide, lack of motivation and so on. So what we try to do now in the fall, in the September, October 2020, is to reduce those cons and to move them to the positive side. So. Um, we started with the plan A, that was everything was going to be normal, everybody was in the classroom, but this was not exactly the case. So uh, in advance we prepared some backup plans and the backup plan A was um, a hybrid model. That means that a few of the students could stay in the classroom, but the others could not be there because, you know, two meters of distance was required. So where could those students be? Well, they should uh, just stay home, take classes from there, but this was not really convenient, not for teachers and not for students, it, because teaching in the class is different from teaching online. So you cannot simply mix these two models together. And um, as the situation with the coronavirus got worse, then we started to use the plan B. That means that everybody was just taking classes from their homes and teachers also moved online, but could either teach from the school, from the building itself or from their homes. Um, as we saw from the first slides at the beginning, teachers were using different environments. I mean, online tools like Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, we are here now, Google Meet and so on. So to reduce all this kind of different environments, our 
university has decided to choose Zoom as the main uh, tool for dialect, direct live communication. And then, uh, of course, apart from being online these a few hours a week, um, students have to do some homework, submit their assignments or so on to find material somewhere. And again, there are tons of different tools where to put them. I'm sure you all know some Google Classrooms, Moodle, uh, uh, sending homeworks by mails or blackboards or uh, also some other environments that uh, Professor Young was mentioning in the in the morning. So also about these tools, we decided to keep it simple and to use just one. This is Moodle. Then, so we have solved the problem of different platforms, and this was now much easier for kids, for kids who are students, but still the question of workload, motivation, participation in the classroom, let's say, remained. And these, I think it's, it's like a package of uh, issues, and if we try to solve them, it's like chasing your own tail, so we don't really get to the end of this story. So, for example, if you want to avoid extra workload for students and to make classes more attractive, that means that the teacher's workload is much higher. And of course, it's time consuming to prepare this. So in this case, teachers workload increases and students workload decreases. So in the classroom, it's fun, it's attractive, it's less stressful, the students have fun. But if you want to keep the same pace, the same level at the high of at the end of the year, we have to keep it up. So where is the, the, the gap? Where is the change? Well, students have to do more classwork. Um, well, of course, there are ways how to engage students, how to make it more active and in this way increase their uh, their learning pace and um, I'm quite a huge fan of these kind of things and we have already mentioned live meetings are one thing and these tools uh, enable users the teachers to add different kinds of activities and of course we have tons of pages tons of tools that enable us to give extra assignments so uh, and for all this kind of stuff, you can find, again, a huge amount of materials on the Internet, some apps, websites, tutorials, webinars and so on. So if uh, since we're using Zoom, I will just briefly um, explain or demonstrate one um, a kind of activities that we can do in Zoom. That means, as we heard uh, Professor Uwe uh, in the morning session, it's quite, it's really important to break students to smaller groups. Why? Because, um, as he said, they're frequently not mentally there, so we have to wake them up, so we have to stimulate them to, to participate. So, this is one way how to use breakout rooms. Then, on the other hand, if you're Take it if we're learning too much. So if they get tired, breakup rooms are a good way for them to rearrange their thoughts, to think about it, you know, to have time to learn, to think how what they learned. Or, for example, to stimulate thinking in smaller groups. So this is, let's say, a very simple tool. And all the other tools online are, are like that as well. Uh, but we can use these um, these functions also to create some more uh, flexible uh, and some more complex activities. For example, if we give students, um, let's say, a few different articles, stories to read, then we can assign students to these different smaller groups and give a specific question. So think about one aspect of the materials that you have read step we mix these students so different participants from originally different groups and they should discuss what they have learned about the same question the same topic from different from their colleagues from different groups then they come back to their own small groups and they discuss again what is the common 
red thread, what is the common idea in all of those stories? So this is again just for for example um, concept how to make breakout rooms um, quite complex, quite um, effective. So this kind of activities would be perfect for um, higher level students, I would say. Um, recently, teams had also added this function, but today, unfortunately, we cannot use it. Um, and the other thing that is quite useful in these environments, either Teams or Zoom, is our polls. That means short questionnaires. You can just ask students uh, different things. For example, give them ideas, um, voting ideas. Would you like to discuss this kind of topic to the next uh, in in the next class or that kind of topic? Uh, share. They can share their opinion uh, because they cannot speak all at the same time simultaneously. This this could be very noisy. Um, we can post some exercises uh, in the form of polls, etc., etc. But let's say functions in Zoom or in Teams are maybe quite limited, so we could also use other tools. For example, Mentimeter. This is, um, as the word menti would apply, a tool to stimulate their way of thinking. So we can give students. Uh, questionnaires to vote. We could try to let them brainstorm or so on. So I would like to invite you to do a little kind of experiment or test for now. So here on the screen you see the QR code. You can just use your mobile phone, um, put the QR code, scan it and answer, for example, these simple questions. So do you use this tool in your class list? If you don't have your mobile here, you can go just to the site menti.com and type the page, the, the number 1644320. So let's say we can have one minute to get there. So students are usually quite um, keen on this kind of activities. They participate. They like to uh, they like to be heard. Well. There are not no results yet. I don't. I hope it's not just because the windows the window could freeze. And if, if you have opened it on the screen, um, then you could also go to the second question. What do you think is the most challenging part, for example, of being the teacher? So for now, for me, for the first part, it was just to be here, to sit here. OK, great. And wait for the responses. OK, so uh, you can also see the responses. So they just popped up a bit. Um, 20 participants answered the questions. So a few of them heard of uh, Mentimeter, most of them not yet. And if you move to the second page of the same um, questionnaire, you just refresh your phone. Uh, you will get the second question. What is the most challenging? in being teacher. Well, actually, uh, word cloud should appear here. 
We can maybe skip a bit later to see if the, the, this is a refreshing problem. OK, but well, I don't want to um, spend too much time here. Yeah. So why the second slide does not appear? If you refresh, if you refresh the page, you can get it. OK. Um, so let's move from this um, yeah, first technical problem to the next page. Uh, apart from the, this one, there are a lot of different tools like uh, live worksheets. Um, so I think lots of teachers have done really tremendous work to prepare different kind of exercises for students and sharing um, their work with other students and teachers as well. Then um, Kahoot as also one tool for uh, voting, for choosing the answers. And uh, there is one page of whiteboard phi. This could be the answer to Yeva's question, how to check uh, their handwriting as well. And that means in real time, in real time, that except of three seconds delay. We can try this a bit later or now. OK, let's uh, let's try it now if we, could, if we can do it. So uh, there is one web page called Whiteboard 5. Uh, if you have your home phone here, you can just scan this code. So this is the code for the classroom. You create your own name. It could be your real name or nickname or whatever. Then you you can join this classroom. So here then I could see all the uh, the students. There are two options to see. One is my whiteboard, so the, the whiteboard as a teacher. And I will just copy, for example, um, this and I will ask students, so please write in characters what you see. So in three seconds delay, you can see this screen as, as part of your screen on the mobile phone. And OK, so this is not really an apple. Here are the apples. So we can see their answers. So we can check here and there uh, how students write. So we could add some extra slides, extra exercises, but this is quite good for the for impression. Of course, if you have your mo mobile phone, it's quite easy to write, but having it on the screen and writing with your mouse, it's not really uh, convenient. So this would be then the whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, then various kind of quizlets, um, again, uh, tools using H5P technologies to create board games, dialogue cards, and so on. You can see all these icons here. Uh, again, or, or Diana mentioned some applications that you can show students the stroke orders, then various dictionaries from basic use to more advanced use. This gloss could be a a bit for demanding students uh, then and our students all have Pleco. This is the according it well in my experience one of the best offline uh, dictionaries ever. So here is balance again. It's really fun you know to learn all this kind of new stuff. It's really fun to learn wow start something new is on the market so let's try to do it. But this is all just the input from the teacher side and to motivate students who the who cares for this teacher again and these tools are to some extent for free and from and from some extent on you should pay it for it and then who will pay it for it then um, um, it would be much more useful, I thought, to engage students in this learning process. So, for example, uh, what we try to do now is that not the teacher, the, not the teacher is the only person who prepares um, the materials, but students 
should prepare the, for example, homework assignments for their colleagues as well. So in this kind, we get a huge amount of exercises and every student prepares, for example, one exercise, one page of exercises, and in return, they could get 30 pages of exercises from their colleagues. And here you can see then really competition. You want to be better next time. You want to make better exercises next time. So in this way, the balance is a bit better now. So students can participate as well. They can be active and they give one piece of um, knowledge to the community and they at the same time get back much more. Um, what I find really intriguing um, in online teaching are exams because some um, basic and intermediate language um, is very convenient to cheat because all the devices are really smart. They could use parallel channels. Um, our students are frequently on the Discord as well. And I don't think there is a, a reliable solution yet because we are now running. Um, we are now trying to be either the faster or the smarter or both. For example, there is one page exam um, dot net. Um, it's quite good, so it seems. But if you try to browse the Internet, you will see very soon that the browser suggests to you what the others are looking for. This is how to cheat, how to uh, hack these systems or similar. If you're using Moodle, there is a safe exam browser integrated in it. But again, looking for Googling a bit about safe exam browser, it suggests you uh, cheating, hacking, bypassing again. So um, le let me just give um, one small example how it's really easy to cheat. So if you're in the classroom, one common way of testing or checking how much students know to write was the things here. So the, the dictation, but this is not the op option anymore because if you have OneNote installed, you just click OK, listen and write. You can do the same just using Word. Well, actually, we could do the same here in Teams. But well, on the other hand, we see that the organizers can turn um, Chinese off or allow just specific languages. And in this case, the cheating wouldn't be so uh, efficient or but anyway, there are some uh, websites, for example, there's dictation.io that recognize um, huge languages very well. And this is one uh, just print screen from the morning session. And uh, the efficiency, well, well the, yeah, the efficiency rate is quite high. So uh, if the teacher was just saying, students, please write this sentence in Chinese, it, it really doesn't show how much they can uh, write because the machines, the, the apps, the computers can do this for them. So, well, I won't be too long. Um, the time is flying anyway. So in general, I'm very positive about this online stuff, online learning, teaching. Well, according to my appearance, students, they don't skip any classes. They are very um, active there. Um, so every student student can participate um, and compared to the temple last year, it's really comparable. They can they can follow the the tempo. They can follow the new stuff, the new grammar words and so on. And it's more easier. Well, it's easier for me to keep these interactions going than in the live classroom. So. In general, I'm very optimistic, but still here it's it's a question of how much the teacher puts his her energy into preparing classes and how efficient is this for students to learn? So it would be interesting to see some reliable, let's say, studies to compare uh, more traditional 
uh, oriented to ways of teaching using paper and pen and using now this new um, new ways of teaching uh, using all these kind of interactions, using all these kind of, of games. So is it really so better now? Was it better before? So what is then the ratio of energy and output? So this would be everything for today and I would like to thank you for your uh, attention here.